everyone. Welcome to the Hindu Current Affairs for Beginners by Law Excellence. Before starting our today's session, first let us see answers for the questions from our previous video. Which of the following is or are the indicator or indicators used by International Food Policy Research Institute to compute Global Hunger Index report? This Global Hunger Index is designed to comprehensively measure and track hunger globally and by country and region and this is calculated every year by the international food policy research institute by highlighting the successes and failures in hunger reduction and this index will provide the insights into the what are the drivers of this hunger by raising awareness and by understanding the regional and country differences in hunger the main aim of this index is to bring in new actions to reduce this hunger and this index is comprised of four components one is undernourishment this deals with the proportion of undernourished people as a percentage of population and this considers child wasting the proportion of children under the age of five who are suffering from wasting that means low weight wasting means low weight for their height and this reflects acute undernutrition and it considers child stunting the proportion of children under the age of 5 who are suffering from stunting which means low height for their age low height for their age which reflects in chronic undernutrition whereas this wasting means low weight for their height and it also considers child mortality this means the mortality rate of children under the age of 5 so now let's see the options here the indicators that were used to compute global hunger index report is undernourishment child stunting child mortality and also child wasting all these four components were considered to compute the global hunger index report as all the three were correct the answer here is c one two and three the next question is as per the surface act which of the following measures can be taken by asset reconstruction companies for asset reconstruction see the asset reconstruction company can take over a company or change the management of the business of a borrower the statement one is correct and they can sell or give it for a lease give that business for a lease the so the second statement is also correct or they can enter into a settlement with the borrower or they can restructure that means they can reduce the interest rate or they might cancel the interest and ask them only to pay the capital or reschedule the debt that means they might give some other time some other extra time to repay the debt and the last thing is enforcing the security interest so even this restructuring or rescheduling of debt is also correct as all the three were correct the answer here is c one two and three now let's start our today's session and these are all the topics that we are going to cover in our today's video first let's start with this article no bank guarantees meant a more expensive new rafael deal this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of defense from this article now let us see some background about this rafael controversy and let us see about this rafael aircraft in 2016 india and france they have signed a 7.87 billion euros deal it is an intergovernmental agreement to buy 36 rafael multi-role fighter jets in flyway condition from france and this deal also has a 50 percent offset clause that has to be executed by the dissolved aviation and its partners in partnership with the indian companies out of this 50 percent 20 percent france should invest into local production of rafale components in order to boost our make in india initiative and the rest 30 percent should go into various aeronautical and military research programs in india this is this 50 percent offset clause that was signed during the deal and the makers of rafale that is the dissolved aviation they were given a choice to choose any company it wants for france to invest this amount under this offset clause they have chosen this anil ambani led reliance defense limited 
then the opposition has alleged that the government is not being transparent about the price of the deal and they say that the government is paying thrice the amount for each aircraft and by choosing this Anil Ambani led Reliance Defence Limited they say this is unfairly chosen as an Indian partner under this offset clause because this was done in favour of Anil Ambani's company because this firm has no experience in aerospace manufacturing. So the opposition has demanded the government to make the records of this deal public. In support to these allegations there came the former French president Mr. Holland who said that French government has no option to choose to have a choice in this Indian offset clause. Then. The government, the opposition had asked the government to make all the details public by comparing the cost to break up with the earlier deal. But the defense minister has refused to share the classified information. Then these petitioners, they have approached the Supreme Court the, by alleging that the decision making in Rafael deal was flawed and there was difference in price compared to the original deal. And the government was biased for choosing the partner under this Indian Offset Clause. Then in response to these allegations, the bench led by Justice Ranjan Gogai, what they have said is, there is no occasion to really doubt the process and it is not the court's job to compare the prices and it is not within the court's experience to step into these issues. And as per this contract, India will get latest weapons like the Meteor and Scalp missiles as part of the contract and a 5 year support package that assures high quality of the fighter and India will pay 15% advance when the initially the deal was inked. Then our defense ministry sources they say that our negotiators, Indian negotiators team have saved 328 million euros by negotiating by the Indian side on this Rafale deal. This is what is the background about this Rafale deal and now let us see about this Rafale aircraft. What is this? This Rafale will be the India's most capable fighter aircraft according to the defense ministry and its major capability differences can be compared with the current best Sukhoi 30 MKI. We can compare with this. This Rafale is a twin engine medium multi-role combat aircraft and it is manufactured by the French company Dassault Aviation and Dassault says that Rafale plays omni role that means it has the capability to perform several actions at a time. Rafale can carry both air to ground as well as air to air attacks and it can also carry out interceptions during the same flight. The aircraft is fitted with an onboard oxygen generation system and this suppresses the need for liquid oxygen refilling or ground support for oxygen production. As we said that it plays omni role. It can perform wide range of combat roles like air supremacy, interdiction, aerial reconnaissance, ground support, in-depth strike, anti-ship strike and nuclear deterrence. The next article is tariff hike to hit exports to US. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of economy and the subtopic here is liberalization and its effects on the Indian economy. Now let us see about this concept. What is this generalized system of preferences? Generalized system of preferences is a preferential tariff system that is extended by the developed countries who are also known as preference giving or donor countries to developing countries who are also known as preference receiving or beneficiary countries. This involves this generalized system of preferences it involves reduced tariffs or duty free entry for eligible products that are being exported by these beneficiary countries to the markets of these donor countries. So what will be the benefits here? Here mainly our Indian exporters will get benefits indirectly because they were getting access to the markets of the importer through these reduced tariffs or duty free entry for the eligible Indian products and 
reduction or removal of import duty on an indian product will make our indian product more competitive to the importer in case if the same product is being manufactured in the importer country and if we are also exporting the same product with these duty free facilities then if we are both managing the same quality if we are both maintaining the same quality then our product will become more competitive in the importing country this tariff preference will help the new exporters to penetrate into a market and this will help the exporters to increase their market share and to improve their profit margins in the donor country now what is this gsp system of united states under this generalized system of preferences program here this will set zero tariffs for some eligible goods for a set of 121 developing countries in order to help those countries to increase their trade to boost their trade and economic development here are indian products 5.6 billion dollar worth indian products were being exported to us under this gsp program here under this we are exporting chemicals germs jewelry engineering and textiles these are the major products that we are getting benefit from this gsp program of us now the issue is us wants to end this preferential trade terms for india the next article is azaz brothers son held in pakistan this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of international relations from this article now let us see about two things one is what is this preventive detention and what is this natcas proscribed list first what is meant by preventive detention it is the imprisonment of a person in beforehand in order to prevent the possible commitment of crime by that person this action will be taken based on the grounds of suspicion that some wrong actions can be done by the concerned person then what is this proscribed list the government of pakistan under anti terrorism act they can declare an organization if they believe that organization is concerned with the terrorism as a proscribed organization that means this organization will be put under surveillance the national counter terrorism authority is the concerned authority for monitoring any signs of reemergence through intelligence coordination once an organization is put under this proscribed list now post this pulwama attack mumbai terror attack mastermind hafiz sayed led jamaat ud dawa and its wing falai insight foundation they were put under this list of banned organizations after indian media has reported that the two outfits has continued to be only on the watch list by the pakistan but they were not under this now pakistan has put both these organizations under this proscribed list the next article is 15 of the 20 most polluted cities in the world are in india this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of environment and the sub topic here is air pollution this ranking is compiled by iq air group and the environment list greenpeace here as per this ranking out of the 20 most polluted cities in the world 15 are from india from this article what is important is just note down what are those cities that have topped in this 2.5 particulate matter 2.5 quality that is the presence of fine particulate matter in the air in the indian cities out of all the countries in the world iceland is ranked with cleanest air the next article is 65% of the hate crimes against dalits this details was documented by amnesty india's interactive halt the hate website they were saying that 65% of the hate crimes what is this hate crime it is a hate crime will involve violence based on and the basis for this violence is race religion sexual orientation or ethnic minorities and this is based on the feelings of hatred towards these religious minorities ethnic minorities or sexually orient differently oriented people the feelings of hatred against them and this website is saying that 65% of hate crimes against the dalits who are the vulnerable people so out of 100% 65% most of the hate crimes were against these dalits is what this amnesty is reporting this article is not much important for prelims but we can use this article to quote 
in our GS1 Indian society while writing a mains answer. The next article is Assam gets smart fence along the border. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of internal security. In our yesterday's video, we have seen about this bold QIT project and also what is this comprehensive integrated border management system. We have seen that in brief. Now let us see it in detail. What is this comprehensive integrated border management system? This system will provide round the clock laser guided surveillance of our borders. The smart fencing project will be implemented to cover the gaps in the physical fencing. Eventually, this technology will be implemented across the entire border. The smart fencing means it is a web of surveillance, communication and data storage services and it will enable the surveillance during difficult weather conditions and reduces the need for physical patrolling, physical patrolling of the borders and this will rely on thermal imaging, infrared and laser based alarms to stop infiltration. With the help of this latest technology system, India will be able to detect infiltration through land, underwater, air and through tunnels. So it will be helpful in counter infiltration and also in preventing the cross border terror activities. So to put it simply, we can say that this integrated border management system will integrate manpower, sensors and command and control so that the situational awareness can be improved and quick response as per the circumstances can be facilitated. One of the major components of this comprehensive integrated border management system is virtual fence, which is very helpful. And the second component is command and control. This is to help in optimum utilization of the resources for border management. Another component is power management so that these border management systems they can keep running without any interruptions under this project yesterday a new project bolt qit border electronically dominated qrt interception technique was established under this comprehensive integrated border management system the next article is Supreme Court asks petitioners to clarify stand on green crackers. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the topic of environment and the subtopic here is air pollution. So now let us see what are these green crackers. Green crackers are the crackers which will not contain any harmful chemicals that would cause air pollution. And these crackers are environment friendly so that we can say these green crackers are less harmful compared to the conventional or traditional firecrackers and they emit less pollution and it results in reduced air pollution and in these green crackers the commonly used polluting chemicals like aluminium barium potassium nitrate and carbon they were they have been removed they'll be removed or their composition will be reduced by 15 to 30 percent swas suffol and star these are the green crackers that launched by the csir scientists the next article is 50 years apart the story of two oic fiascos this article comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of international organizations what is this oic organization for islamic cooperation this is an international organization consisting of 57 member states and this organization was established in 1969 the administrative headquarters of this organization is in saudi arabia this organization was established with an objective to protect the interests and ensure the progress and well-being of muslims and to raise the collective voice of the muslim world in a spirit to promote international peace and harmony. Is India a member to this organization being the third largest Muslim populated country? No, India is not a member of it due to the resistance of Pakistan to admit India as a member of this organization. But this is the first time India was invited to attend the 46th session of this organization of in Islamic cooperation OIC's 
Council of Foreign Ministers that was held in Abu Dhabi. The next article is Promise Amidst Strife. This article comes under GS Paper 2 under the topic of international relations. From this article, now we are going to see about two things. One is what is this Arab Spring and we will be seeing about Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index. Now, first of all, what is this Arab Spring? Arab Spring is a democratic uprising that arose independently and it had spread across the Arab world in 2011. This movement was originated in Tunisia when a police woman, she had slapped a food vendor and that food vendor has self-immolated. This event led to an unprecedented movement and the reactions were followed in Yemen, Syria, Egypt, Libya and Bahrain. And these protests, this Arab Spring has brought to an end of brutal dictatorships in Egypt, Tunisia and it has brought down Gaddafi's dictatorship in Libya. And Bahrain has introduced large scale reforms to contain this protest. And the region, the entire region, this massive popular movement in the Middle East region, the entire region seeks for a transformation of ruling political structures and processes. This is what is needed by the people at that time of this Arab Spring. They wanted fundamental reforms in the governance. They needed social equity and emancipation of poor classes. And they desired for better opportunities in education, development and employment. This movement in every country like in Egypt, Libya, Yemen and Syria, except in Tunisia, the revolution has turned very violent. It is Tunisia where it started, but then it, in the other regions, it had turned violent. And in case of Syria, the situation has resulted in a civil war. The next thing is, let us see about this Corruption Perception Index. This index is published by Transparency International. This Corruption Perception Index is a composite index that is drawn from 12 surveys to rank nations across the globe. And this index is a benchmark to gauge the perceptions of corruptions and is used by the analysts and the investors. And this index is also based on expert opinions of public sector corruption and takes note of various factors like whether the governmental leaders are held account or whether they are going unpunished for the corruption and what is the prevalence of bribery and whether the public institutions were responding to the citizens needs. All these factors will be taken into consideration while composing this index. And as of 2018, as of 2018 corruption perception index, India is ranked at 78. As per the 2018's report, Denmark is the world's least corrupt country by scoring 88 out of 100 points and Somalia is ranked the last with a score of 10 out of 100 points. The next article is India really needs to enhance its counter-terrorism capabilities. This article comes under GS Paper 2 under the topic of international relations. From this article now we are going to see about two things. One is what is this Belt and Road Initiative and what is this China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. First, let us see about this Belt and Road Initiative. This initiative was announced by the Chinese President Xi Jinping and it is the China's most ambitious economic initiative. Here, under this project, China's president has called for building Silk Road Economic Belt and a 21st century maritime Silk Road. These two are the components under this Belt and Road Initiative. These two together were referred as One Belt, One Road. This One Belt, One Road is the largest development plan in the modern history. This is a development strategy to connect China with Central Asia, Europe and Indo-Pacific littoral countries and this policy has two components as I said one is belt and the other thing is road. One belt refers to the land based silk road economic belt. Here this China aims to connect countries underdeveloped hinterland to Europe through Central Asia 
and what is this road component this one road refers to ocean going maritime silk road this is to connect the fast growing southeast asian region to china's southern provinces through ports and railways and here the plan is to connect the pacific ocean and the indian ocean this will connect the chinese coastline with southeast asia south asia gulf and east coast of africa by covering the countries throughout the asian continent from china to the rest of eurasia then what is this china pakistan economic corridor this china pakistan economic corridor is also part of china's one belt one road initiative to link china with europe this project is a developmental project between pakistan and its all weather friend china under this project what is going to happen here is this project this corridor will connect the kashgar town in china with the gadar port in pakistan and this will be connected through a network of roads and other infrastructure projects like dams hydro power projects railways and pipelines this is the network how this corridor will be connected through kashgar from kashgar to gadar port in pakistan and by constructing this corridor china will get access to the middle east as well as europe and gadar port will provide benefits like it will provide a link between maritime silk road and the arabian sea this gadar port which is at the mouth of persian gulf will provide the china with shortest route to the oil rich middle east africa and most of the western hemisphere and along with these commercial benefits china will also have strategic as well as geopolitical advantages in the indian ocean region then what is india's concern about this project the main concern about india is that this corridor route is through pakistan occupied kashmir which india considers as our territory and the construction of this corridor will strengthen pakistan's claim over that region and there were other reasons like china's presence in this location of pakistan occupied kashmir as a connecting point to south west central and east asia this might limit india's outreach to the eurasian region and the gadar port will expand china's string of pearls what is string of pearls this is a network of ports which china is building from its eastern coast to the west asia and the other reason is india suspects that china pakistan economic corridor will counter india's act east policy and the newly developed roadways near the indian border in the pakistan occupied region might increase infiltration of anti indian elements from pakistan to india The next article is pension scheme for workers launched. This article comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of governance. From this article now let us see about a scheme known as Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandan Yojana. What is this program all about? This is a new pension scheme that was announced in this interim budget to provide pension for labor or worker in the unorganized sector. The features of this scheme is for the scheme is for the informal sector or unorganized sector workers the subscribers to the scheme were assured for a, with a monthly pension of 3000 rupees per month after they reach 60 years age and the subscribers have to pay a monthly amount of 100 rupees if the subscriber joins at the age of 29 and 55 rupees if the subscriber joins this scheme at the age of 18 the same amount will be matched by the government that means the government will also contribute the same amount on behalf of these workers the scheme is eligible for the persons who are aged between 18 and 40 and who are having their earnings less than 15000 rupees per month the scheme is estimated to benefit 10 crore workers from the informal sector and the government has allocated an initial fund of 500 crores for this scheme we have been saying that this scheme is for the unorganized sector workers what constitutes an unorganized sector unorganized sector in the country includes 
unincorporated entities who are having less than 10 workers and is owned by individuals or households. This sector also includes people who are working independently in non-formal work that needs minimal skills and the sector contributes over 50% to the Indian GDP. The scheme is important because nearly 42 crore workers in India are working in the informal sector. As per the Indian labor market update of 2016, 82% of the Indian workforce is in unorganized sector. The workers of this sector include street vendors, rack pickers, porters, BD workers, rickshaw pullers, agricultural laborers, all these. The nature of their job and the income they receive is not stable. And due to the non-availability of any laws to protect their interests, they are subjected to exploitation by the employers. These uncertain earnings will put pressure on them financially and they need some kind of monetary protection to lead a life with means after their productive years. This is the reason why the social security schemes like this Pradhan Mantri Sharam Yogi Mandhan is necessary where the government is contributing a premium amount on behalf of the worker. The next article is insurers must use judgment while investing says IRDAI. This article comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of polity. What is this IRDAI? Insurance Regulatory Development Authority of India. This is an apex statutory body to regulate and develop the insurance industry in the country. This was constituted as per the provisions of Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority Act of 1999. What it does? What is this authority does? It is to protect the rights of insurance policy holders and it will provide registration certification to the LIC that is the life insurance companies and it is this organization which will renew, modify, cancel or suspend their registration certificates. And it also promotes efficiency in conducting insurance business and promotes and regulates the professional organizations that are connected with insurance and reinsurance business. This authority also regulates the investment of funds by these insurance companies and it will act as an adjudicating body to resolve the disputes between insurers and intermediaries that is the insurance intermediaries. The next article is polar bears climate woes. This article comes under GS paper 3 under the concept of climate change. From this article now we are going to see about this term known as footprint. What is this footprint which we keep hearing? What is this ecological footprint? The simplest way to define this ecological footprint is to say that the impact of human activities that is measured in terms of the area of biologically productive land and water that is required to produce the goods consumed and to assimilate the waste that are generated. To make it more simple, it is the amount of environment that is necessary to produce goods and services that are necessary to support the particular lifestyle. So it is the area of productive land and water ecosystems that are needed for the production of resources that the population will consume and absorb the waste that is produced by this population. It is nothing but the environmental input of a person or population. The next article is Mukesh Ambani is 13th in Forbes Ultra Rich List. This article is not much important from the prelims point of view or UPSC. The only thing is just note down. Maybe it can be useful for group 1 or group 2 exams. Just what is this Forbes Ultra Rich List and the Indian who is ranked is Mukesh Ambani and he is ranked in the 13th position. Now let's see our today's prelims questions. The first one is the corruption perception index is published by which among the following? And the other thing is the terms swas, safal and star recently seen in news is related to which among the following? Try to answer these questions and in tomorrow's video we will see the explanation for these questions. Thank you.